Okay, so I've already done a video on these PCIe NVMe adapters for Raspberry Pi 5, uh, all from Geekom. So this is the X1000, 1001, and 1002. Been really pleased with them. You can see I'm using this one on my 4 gig Pi, uh, and I basically use some some extra shafts here to get it a bit taller so it gives a better cooling over the official Raspberry Pi cooler. Although I do find this a bit loud. I mean, it's a great cooler, amazing for the money, but it is a bit noisy compared to others. As you can see, I've got a lot of space there, but I can't really go any higher because of the length of this cable. And they generally come with quite short cables. So I reached out to Geekom and said, have they got any longer cables? And they have sent me all of these with some screws and things in there as well. But also, they mentioned that they have another board. Uh, so this is the X1003. And what's interesting about this is where they've oriented the PCIe slot and also the M.2. And they've done that especially for cooling. So it keeps it out of the way. Now, I'm not sure what cable comes in this. I'll find that in a minute. But with the use of the longer cable, either with this uh, or with one of the other boards, obviously this one is unique in that it's underneath, uh, or unique to these four, in that it's underneath the Pi. So it meant that I can use an ice tower cooler, which I really like because it is very effective cooling. It's, it's enough cooling for the Raspberry Pi 5, even with overclocking to quite high levels. Uh, it's got a nice heat sink on there, and uh, it's, it's probably my favorite at the moment. And uh, I've got this 3D printed clip, which I find very useful, although I've got another tip, which I'll mention in Pi News uh, about securing your NVMe. But what I really wanted to do is have the Pi enclosed and also have a PCIe adapter. So maybe something more like this case, which I've already done a review for. But this doesn't have enough room in it to uh, have an M.2 drive inside. I've tried a few different attempts. Um, but what I thought I'd do is maybe try and put it on the back of here. So it's external to the case, very easy to swap out the drives, but also I've got the great cooling of an ice tower cooler because this case actually comes with an ice tower cooler. Uh, I might leave the sides off it for extra cooling uh, or maybe to put one side on it, I'm not sure yet. Uh, it's very easy to remove with the screws here. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited about being able to use a PCIe adapter, but with this longer cable so I can, I can have it very accessible. Let's have a look at this board first. They do also show it in a Geekworm case. You can see their P579 and also the official Raspberry Pi 5 case it fits in as well with the official cooler. And actually I see here the design is uh, to remove the screw from the official cooler and you're actually using the cooler as a mount. So I think I use my Pi 4. So let's take the screws out of this one. Uh, I can probably use the existing cable that's in there. Although it comes with a shorter one, look. So it comes with a really short cable. Oh, let's use the cable that it comes with. So probably best to put it in the board first. So let's pop that in there. Close it up. And in here, make sure it's nice and straight and close that up. So you can see as well, I've got, this is actually an EDATEC base, uh, which comes with part of their passive cooler. I'm gonna leave that on there because I like it to have a nice solid base. So ignore these three columns, they wouldn't be there. Uh, so this bit obviously sits on the GPIO pins, that's what gives it power. But I'm gonna to need to pull out this screw, as it says in the instructions. And the one they give as a replacement is just a longer version. Back on the GPIO pins. Make sure the cable is out the way. Oh yeah, it's underneath. And pop that screw in through the top. So securing the board, literally just one screw and the GPIO opens, but that feels nicely in place. And you can see how much clearance we've got here. So the idea is that it's not obscuring the fan. And if I was to use a bigger drive, obviously it would just stick out the side. Oh, and this, 
Oh, that's cool as well. So ordinarily they're sprung upwards, but this is flush. So that actually feels nicer when the board is just in like that. It feels, it feels pretty solid. It's not moving anywhere. Yeah, that's good. And then if I was to put one of these on, so it's probably this way up. There you go. And we've got the screw to secure it in place. Yeah, I like that. Um, so again, ignore these columns and the aluminium base. I'm just leaving on there because it was already on there. But uh, really, this is about how it fits with the official cooler. Now I'm just going to do uh, a speed test on it because I've speed tested all the others and uh, all the results will be in that video. I'll link it in the description. Uh, so let's pull that out. So you can see we've got some blue LEDs on here. I've used the 2280 board just because that's what my main operating system runs on and I want to do some speed tests. So let's just get the results of the other boards up. So if I go to my channel and pop Geekworm in here. Yeah, this is the one. So if I scroll down, there should be a load of speed tests in here. Yeah. So let's grab that and put that in a document. Let's have a new one. And let's pop that in there for now. And let's do some tests. So if we press the Windows key and start typing diagnostics, you can see it comes up. It's built into Raspberry Pi OS as well. Uh, oh, I need to double check that I've got PCIe 3 enabled on this. So in the boot and firmware and config.txt. I haven't, so I need to enable PCIe 3 speeds on this. And I've probably got it in the video. I would imagine I've mentioned it here. So let's open a terminal and do sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash firmware forward slash config dot text. Okay, so let's put it in here. DT param PCIEX one underscore GN equals three. Obviously it doesn't say three there, but if I press play, it will. So let's close that video down because we don't want anything else running when we're doing the speed test and control X and yes to save that and enter. And then we need to reboot. And the reason I didn't have PCIe 3 enabled is I don't enable PCIe 3 uh, in my KDE Plasma image just in case for some people it doesn't work with their drive. I've never had a problem with it, but uh, it will be at PCIe 2 speeds, which is still fast. So I've obviously I've been using it like that since I reinstalled it onto this maker disk and it's, it's absolutely fine. But if you can have extra speed, you might as well. So let's go for diagnostics again and I'll do three speed tests and uh, I take the fastest of those three results. So I'll just copy them into that document I just created. Okay, so we've got a lot of uh, results to go through here. So I've left all three up, but I generally take the one with the fastest random read speed uh, because I think that's better for running an OS. So in this case, it's this one here at 53,194. So let's delete the other two. You can see they're all pretty consistent. So let's get rid of that. It's a bit tidier. Now before I go through the results, it's worth mentioning that the old boards were tested on this Keoxia 256 drive, which actually doesn't work anymore. Uh, it stopped working, so I can't use it for this speed test. So this is the first time I've used this maker disk in this speed test. So obviously bear that in mind when you're looking at these results. So we've got some pretty similar scores uh, to the other boards. So Sequential write speed is the fastest I've had, so that could be down to the maker disk drive being faster at sequential write speed. Uh, but 771,000 compared to the fastest on the other three boards, which was 697. Uh, random write speed is super fast on this maker disk, uh, 150,000 compared to 93 and 94,000. And uh, random read speed was actually slower. Now, I'm not sure if that's because it's a larger drive 
could be making the difference on that random read speed result. But uh, still decent results. And the fact that I was using PCIe two speeds on it and didn't really think anything of it, it, it felt fast to me. Uh, I didn't think it was lacking means that NVMe is super fast on the Pi. It's, it's not the bottleneck on a Raspberry Pi 5. You know, we have super fast storage and that's great. And all these boards, uh, I, I think I would just pick on the style that you wanted for the build you want, rather than just sort of focusing ultimately on the faster speed because they're all pretty similar. That said, I am interested to see what happens when I start putting a longer cable on as to whether that changes the results, but I'll do that in a separate video. And I also wanna experiment with those longer cables in getting the PCIe board on the outside of that case. So thanks to Geekworm for sending me another board to test, and I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.